Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about the RCUG guideline, Green Top Guideline number 8, which came in October 2021 and it was also published in British Journal of Obstetric and Gynecology. And the name of that guideline is Amniocentesis and Chorionic Villus Sampling. So the first point which is discussed in this guideline is that what is the additional risk of miscarriage associated with chorionic villus sampling? The guideline states that women should be informed that additional risk of pregnancy loss following transabdominal chorionic villus sampling performed by an appropriately trained operator is likely to be below 0.5%. And what is the additional risk of miscarriage associated with amniocentesis? The guideline says that women should be informed that additional risk of pregnancy loss following an amniocentesis performed by an appropriately trained operator is likely to be below 0.5%. So in both amniocentesis and CVS, the risk of miscarriage is below 0.5%. Let us talk about the antibiotics used while, while performing the amniocentesis. If amniotic fluid appears cloudy or purulent or there, there are clinical features of intra-amniotic infection, then we need to consider microbial analysis and antibiotic treatment. Now, this is a very important table from the RCOG guideline about CVS and amniocentesis and it shows what are the other risks associated with amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling. The first risk is about the second sampling or the repeat procedure. It is up to 6% in amniocentesis and also up to 6% with a chorionic villus sampling. Next is about the blood stain sample which is 0.8% with amniocentesis and not applicable to CVS. Confined placental mosaicism is not applicable to uh, amniocentesis because we don't take placental sam sample in amniocentesis but less than 0.2 percent in chorionic villus sampling maternal cell contamination is 1 to 2 percent with amniocentesis and also 1 to 2 percent with the chorionic villus sampling the rapid test failure is 2 percent with amniocentesis and 2 percent with chorionic villus sampling field cell culture is 0.5 to 1 percent with amniocentesis and also 0.5 to 1 percent with chorionic villus sampling severe infection is rare with amniocentesis and also rare with the chorionic villus sampling and also fetal injury and maternal visceral injury these both are rare with both amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling Another question in RCG guideline is that what is required for training for amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling? The answer is that for training, first point is that achieved competency with a maternal fetal medicine subspeciality training, fetal medicine advanced skill training module or equivalent international qualification. Second point is simulation training and directly supervised procedures are integral. Another point, what is required for maintaining good practice for amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling? So the first point is that maintain competency by completing or supervising. Ideally, a minimum of 20 amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling procedures annually. Secondly, communication skills training. Thirdly, the continuous audit, multiple insertions, failures, bloody tabs and procedure related losses. PROM and PTB within 14 days of procedure. Next is seek support from a more experienced operator if anticipated or encountered difficulty. The last point is that we need to review the practice where an operator's annual loss rate of normal babies exceeds 3% for either amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling. Next, what additional risk is associated with invasive testing? Severe maternal sepsis is a very rare complication. Infection may arise from organism present on the skin, ultrasound, probe, gel or via needle puncture of the bowel. For that, we need to do first of all the skin decontamination, secondly the use of separate sterile gel sachet, thirdly enclosing the ultrasound probe in a sterile bag. And then the continuous ultrasounds are recommended prior to amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling. At what gestation should amniocentesis be carried out? Amniocentesis should be performed after 15 weeks of gestation. When should chorionic villus sampling be carried out? 
CVS should not be performed before 10 weeks of gestation and where possible chorionic villus sampling should be performed from 11 weeks of gestation to reduce the risk of technical challenges. Now, what are the consideration when performing amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling for multiple pregnancy? First of all, counseling. Women considering amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling should receive detailed counseling and pregnancy mapping by suitably trained healthcare professionals. Next is the importance of operator with the skills. In multiple pregnancies, amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling should be performed by an operator with the skills to perform selective termination of pregnancy if required. And the last point is about information about the risk of pregnancy loss. Women with the multiple pregnancies should be informed uh, that the additional risk of pregnancy loss for the twin pregnancy following CVS or amniocentesis performed by a skilled operator is around 1%. Now, what risks are associated with the third trimester amniocentesis? First of all, the preterm labor. The risk associated with the third trimester diagnostic amniocentesis, including the risk of preterm labor, are likely to be low. And the second is about the cell culture failure. And women should be informed that there are higher risk of cell culture failure with amniocentesis performed in the third trimester. Now, what are the risks of mother to child transmission of infection? First of all, the screening results for the blood-borne viruses, viral load and antigen test results should be reviewed with an invasive test is considered and individualized risk of viral transmission should be discussed. Second point is that where the screening results for the blood-borne viruses are not known, the testing should be delayed until HIV status can be determined. Third point is that the risk of mother to child transmission of HIV for women on highly active antiretroviral therapy is very low. And the last point is about the antiretroviral treatment that should be optimized to uh, the aim for an uh, undetectable viral load prior to amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling. Next is about the risk of mother to child uh, transmission of hepatitis B that is very low with a viral load of less than 6.99 log uh, 10 copies per ml but that increases with higher viral load so it depends upon the viral loads basically the higher the viral load the higher is the risk of transmission to the baby another point is that there is no evidence of the risk of mother to child transmission of hepatitis c based on the limited data available so i have um, highlighted all the salient features of this rcog guideline with you and that bring me to the end of my presentation and i would like to complete it with these golden words that hard work pays off stay dedicated be persistent remain positive dream big and conquer all you want so thank you so much wish you all the best allah hafiz